This is Southern Cross News with Joe Palmer. Good evening, everyone. The Tasmanian Greens has criticised both major parties for ruling out deals with minorities, despite fears of a hung parliament at the next election. Labor used its weekend state conference to promise no deals to form government as a bitter conference debate settles. Cooling off after a heated state Labor conference, the deputy opposition leader today playing down claims of exposed party divisions. I thought this was actually a very positive conference where there was a difference of agreement on a couple of points. The government capitalising on a bitter debate fuelled by unionists on a euthanasia conscience vote, honing in on new leader Rebecca White. But it also shows that Beck White's not able to stand up and stop it. You know, people do seriously question the experience and the capability of the opposition leader. Rebecca made it clear that a conscience vote was provided to members on that issue and that that was agreed at, um, uh, within our state party. A weekend where the Labor leader promised no government forming deals. We are ready to win majority Labor government. The Greens were quick to criticise. It's incredibly arrogant to stand there before the state election and say to Tasmanian voters, it's our way or the highway. The Hodgman government fearing it could lose seats in the upcoming election, threatening a hung parliament. There's some prospect of that and I, I don't mind admitting it. Um, we've got every intention to ensure that Tasmanians can re-elect a majority government. Independent candidates are real possibility as the Jackie Lambie network plans to run while Pauline Hanson's One Nation is reportedly pulled out. You can have um, a minority government that's functional, that's stable, that deals with the difficult issues. A view not currently shared by either major party. Jacqueline Robson, Southern Cross News. A man in his 70s has died after the vehicle he was working on at his home shifted, trapping him underneath. Crews responded to the incident on Bridge North Road in Rosevale just after 12.30 this afternoon. The man died at the scene as a result of his injuries. A report will now be prepared for the coroner. A young Burns victim who almost died when her boyfriend allegedly set her on fire has finally been able to tell police her side of the story. Georgia Main joins us from the Alfred Hospital. Georgia, has her condition improved? Well, Joe, after more than two months in a coma, Nicole Evans is finally awake. The 20-year-old has been here at the Alfred Hospital in Melbourne since April uh, after her fiancé allegedly doused her in flames and set her alight at their home in Chigwell. She was flown here to Melbourne with burns to 65% of her body, including her face. Police say that she is now well enough to communicate and is able to assist them with their investigations, but she will remain here for many months. Her fiancé, 34-year-old Matthew Davey has pleaded not guilty to grievous bodily harm and assault. He will be back at the Hobart Supreme Court this Wednesday. Joe. Thanks so much for that. A 20-year-old man is to be prosecuted in connection with a fatal old beach crash. A 16-year-old girl was killed in the single vehicle collision on Saturday morning. Police say the man will face a count of being an unaccompanied learner. No further charges have been laid, but officers say the investigation into the crash is continuing. And police have made an arrest over a Newtown crash two weeks ago. A 25-year-old Gagebrook man was taken into custody in Newtown this afternoon. A 42-year-old woman was killed in the two-vehicle crash, while police say the driver of the other car fled the scene. Authorities are renewing warnings about extremely dangerous conditions on Tasmanian roads, with black ice reported across the state over the past few days. There have been 15 crashes today alone, with most attributable to Leave bad your weather. Of time to get to where you're going, slow down, um, take your time, and uh, give plenty of space to the vehicle in front of you, and just make sure that you're not in a rush and in a panic. Um, it's better to have your child to, at school a little bit later than not at all. Police are also urging drivers to ensure their vehicles are roadworthy. A major timber processor it was hoped could relocate to Tasmania has instead struck a deal with the Victorian government. But the Tasmanian government says negotiations are still underway to get Australian sustainable hardwoods to move to the state. It's as another region is awarded a jobs package. 
Growing a plan to improve Tasmania's youth unemployment, the South East today named the new region to benefit from an Australian first initiative. A jobs action package which we launched in the Derwent Valley um, some months ago. The Chamber of Commerce and Industry and the Council of Social Services teaming up to bridge the gap between businesses and potential young employees in a tailor-made solution. So what we want to be able to do is provide funds to communities to actually be able to get them to um, have their ideas realised at a local level. Get businesses together in regions, understand what's actually available, what they're really looking for and then you know, really help those people to, to be job ready for those businesses. For Four regions in total will benefit, the final two still in the works. We'll make a determination as to the next regions. Um, this is a, a process that's being undertaken. While job creation in the North West is under question, Australian Sustainable Hardwoods was hoped to move to Tasmania but has now struck a deal with the Victorian Government to be bought out. They've locked up the timber in Victoria and this is as a result. Uh, they've had to buy out the business. Uh, they know that they can operate here in Tasmania. The Resources Minister says talks on a proposal to see the timber processor operating in Burnie is ongoing. We remain in, uh, in discussion with them. That will take place, uh, has taken place over the last 12 months. What we've got is a resources minister who's tripping over himself to offer public cash to lure that company here. No formal proposal has been made by the company. Jacqueline Robson, Southern Cross News. Tasmanian authorities are considering the balance between development and preservation. In Hobart, the City Council is tonight considering a report on possible changes to building height restrictions. The cityscape of Hobart is undeniably unique. The waterfront state capital surrounding a harbour with the dramatic rise of Mount Wellington as a backdrop. But as Tasmania grows, council is questioning how development should complement the landscape. Now that we're the flavour of the month and a lot of people want to invest in the city, it is obviously causing some growth pains. And we're hearing very loud and clear from the public that quite a few people have issues with the height. The Hobart City Council is tonight considering a report examining building heights in the city. It's proposed an area of possible development from Macquarie Street up to Melville Street. The Australian Institute of Architects says developers and residents need certainty. And the planning schemes are not there to prevent development. They're actually there to encourage it, but to encourage it in a way that we can actually really um, emphasise what is good about our cities. Tasmania's tallest building is the 73 metre Rest Point Casino. The proposed Palace Hotel was set to reach that scale but was reduced in height. Singapore based Fragrance Group has proposed two tall buildings, including a skyscraper hotel more than 120 metres high. These projects and the possibility of others have led to more than 4,000 people to sign the Hobart Not High Rise petition. I think it is a testy subject and I think the reason why it's testy is because change often brings around about uncertainty and people don't like uncertainty. Hobart Council's planning committee is suggesting a maximum height of 75 metres in part of the city but says further modelling is needed to finalise that figure. Nothing's been approved as of now. Um, the 75 metres has been suggested as probably the optimum uh, but again that's up for discussion. The report recommends the creation of view lines like this one from Hunter Street to Mount Wellington to determine iconic views that should be preserved. There, are, there is that established acceptability of seeing the cove and then looking up to the mountain. Now that's not always going to be possible but I think if we can keep that as an aim that will be something that everyone will be proud of in the future. If the report is adopted tonight, the council says it will hold public forums. Michael Breen, Southern Cross News. Despite the UK Ministry of Defence denying a request from the state government to reconsider awarding a Victoria Cross to fallen sailor Teddy Sheehan, today there is new hope. For years, the family of ordinary seaman Teddy Sheehan have been fighting to have his bravery awarded. The state government now hopeful of using a precedent case to further the campaign. Captain Raymond Alsop precedent, where he was reconsidered for an award upgrade and received the star of gallantry. Uh, we are buoyed by that new precedent and we will be uh, writing to Rear Admiral Tim Barrett, the Chief of the Royal Australian Navy, for reconsideration. Now the precedent's been set, 
it gives Australia, especially the Australian Navy, a chance to recognise Teddy for the, for the true award that he duly deserved. Sheen went down with HMAS Armadale in 1942 while firing on Japanese planes in the Timor Sea. The Cradle Mountain Wilderness Gallery has been given a new lease on life, officially reopened today. The exhibition showcases the works of a number of Tasmanian artists and is hoped to become a must-see for tourists. This is the finished product after eight long months of renovations. The gallery features a range of art mediums, all highlighting the beauty of our state's wilderness. It really will be a showcase of uh, Tasmanian artists right here in uh, the, the edge of the Tasmanian World Heritage Area. What we've tried to do is engage with Tasmanian artists as much as possible and they you know, have really responded to that. There is an, there's a love for this gallery and, um, you know, and that's I think make, going to make it work very well. The extinct Tasmanian tiger also features in the exhibit with this hologram aiming to wow visitors. I think it appeals not just to children but to, to big kids like myself. Uh, it, it is really amazing just to see uh, the tiger move across the screen. This is the first time this piece by Glover 2017 winner Raymond Arnold has been shown, created specifically for the gallery. The work features Mount Lyle near Queenstown. Initially I make etchings, which are copper plate etchings, make them on um, and print them in my studio assemble them as prints and then we photograph them and then I get them printed as digital prints in Hobart. From a tourist point of view I think what it offers is another level to their experience at Cradle Mountain that no, nobody else can offer up here. With tourism to Cradle Mountain growing 16% year on year, it's hoped this gallery will further expand those tourism numbers. And with fresh snowfall expected on Sunday, the area is shaping up to be a strong visitor drawcard this winter. Jessica Moran, Southern Cross News. A crucial step towards returning the North Hobart Football Club to the TSL will take place tonight. A vote on the future management of the Hobart City Demons could see changes which will build support for a proposed name change later this year. Once a giant in Tasmania's football landscape, North Hobart's demise still causes angst among some loyal supporters. In 2013, the club morphed into the Hobart City Demons we know today. But a drive to revert the team back to North Hobart hits a landmark tonight through a potential shake-up of board control. This is about the future sustainability of the footy club and, the, and bringing the identity of North Hobart home. A vote will determine whether members can decide who is on the club's board, rather than having it appointed by an independent panel. Craig Martin is behind the push, saying it will galvanise support for a separate vote next month on changing the club's name back to North Hobart. I think it's part of the process. We would like to um, put forward our agenda uh, to the members of the football club and be voted in. AFL Tasmania won't speculate on how any changes will affect the league, but it says returning the North Hobart identity will provide some closure for disillusioned supporters. Our preference is for nine strong clubs in the Tasmanian State League and whatever process needs to, to underpin that um, we'd be supportive of. The head of Hobart City Demons has told Southern Cross News the club will accept the will of the people, even if that means a name change next month. Tonight, the groundwork for what could see the return of one of the country's oldest and most successful clubs. Tom Johnson, Southern Cross News. A free meningococcal vaccination will soon be rolled out in Tasmania for those aged between 15 and 19. Under the new program, more than 33,000 teenagers will be eligible to receive a four-stage vaccine which will protect against several strains of meningococcal. Older teenagers are particularly at risk of carrying and transmitting the bacteria to others. The vaccine will be distributed at high schools during term three and by GPs from August. August. There have been five confirmed cases this year. The Royal Hobart Hospital has achieved a special award with more Tasmanian parents having skin-to-skin -skin contact with their newborns in the neonatal unit than anywhere else in the country. For many new mums, having the opportunity to nurture their child with kangaroo care outside of a crib is invaluable. 
Baby River is only 30 days old and came into the world nine weeks premature. He relies on a feeding tube to survive and twice a day this is given by mum Carly in the Royals near a natal special care unit. Just before I was holding him and he was full of energy and now you put him on you and he starts to feel really relaxed. For the new mum, having the opportunity to be close with River is invaluable. It's really important to um, give him one-on-one -on -one time as I can't be in the hospital with him at, at this stage because he's needing to get stronger as he's a little prem baby. Carly is one of many new parents who have helped the Royal Hobart Hospital win the nationwide Kangarooathon. Mums and dads at the Royal averaged 172 minutes of skin-to-skin -skin contact per day per baby, the most in Australia. This is obviously not a natural thing to do for the baby to be outside the, the mum at that early age, so we try and recreate what's happening inside. The benefits of kangaroo care are numerous. It helps the babies go stronger and strengthens the bond between parent and child. And it also helps the babies regulate their breathing, uh, regulate their temperature control. Um, it makes them calm, less stressed. It's just a more natural position to be in than being in a crib. Louise Hedger, Southern Cross News. Well, let's take a look at business and finance news now with thanks to Tasplan, your local super fund. The Australian share market has closed lower with all sectors in negative territory except for energy stocks. The ASX 200 index has dropped by 37 points. A short time ago, the Australian dollar was trading at 76.68 US cents and just under 105 New Zealand cents. In the TSL, Lauderdale's Alex Hill says his side is one of the fittest in recent years and capable of taking a top three spot. Hill kicked a career best four goals in his side's 27 point victory against Launceston. In terms of depth, I think this is the best we've been. Now comes up against Hobart City Demons next round. And the votes are in for the RACT Insurance Player of the Year in the TSL after round 13. With Alex Hill's efforts earning him three votes after Lauderdale's win over Launceston. Kyle Palmer-Hughes took out best on ground following Clarence's demolition of Devonport. Edward Cole took the votes for Hobart City Demons against Burnie. And Glenorchy's Tim Butterworth was judged best of field for the Pies against the Tigers. To the leaderboard now, and Tom Couch and Jay Bowden are still on top, two votes clear of Launceston's Rulla Kelly Mansell and his teammate Brody Palfreyman. South Hobart is back on top of the NPL table after beating Devonport 3 0. The return to form has South Hobart's coach declaring his side the team to beat. And obviously now by the strength of the bench you can see the, the injury situation is easing and we, we've got a bit of depth. South Hobart also has the best goal difference in the league. Tasmanian Daniel Watkins has missed out on a finals berth at the Canoe Slalom World Cup in Germany. Watkins finished outside the top ten in his semi-final run. Good evening. Well, Hobart and Launceston managed to just make double figures today. Burnie and Devonport fared slightly better. Overnight temperatures well below average. Lyaweenie throwing out another minus 10 to be the coldest. King Island had the first of the afternoon rain today and registered 4 millimetres to 3pm. Flinders Island had our maximum 16 degrees. St Helens 14, King Island and Wynyard 13. Friendly Beaches, Strawn 12 degrees, Campania 11, Lowhead 10. Our lowest maximum was 3 degrees at Bushy Park if you don't count Macquarie Island's top of one. Cloud over the southeast of the continent extends over Tasmania. Cold, unstable air is further west, uh, south of WA and South Australia. Convective cloud over the far north of the country. That band of cloud moving in from the northwest is the rain bearing system, patchy low cloud over eastern parts. Tomorrow the low moves to be just to our west. A weak high pressure ridge extends over central Australia, a cold front to the southwest of all that. North to northeasterly winds tending northwesterly in the morning and up to 25 knots over the north. Winds tending southwesterly later over the west. A road weather alert warns of black ice over most of the state early tomorrow morning. And for tomorrow, a little rain clearing from Hobart, 13 the maximum. An early storm for Adventure Bay, bit of rain, a top of 12, minus 1 for Taralea, 9 the maximum. For Launceston, rain and 12 degrees, 12 for Devonport, rain for Bridport and 13. 
For Burnie tomorrow, wet weather, 13 the top, just 12 for Strawn and Marrawar with the same forecast. And for the east, wet weather as well, 13 for St Helens, a top of 14 for Swansea Whitemark, a high of 13 degrees. On Wednesday, rain in the west and far south, mostly in the afternoon. Fine on Thursday, apart from showers for the west and far south. Morning frost on Friday, a fine, partly cloudy day, apart from a coastal shower. A shower or two in Perth, showers for Adelaide and in the morning for Melbourne. Canberra just reaching 10 degrees tomorrow, a sunny 20 in Sydney and 26 for Brisbane. The clouds are rolling in at 6 degrees in Hobart at the moment, 6 right now in Launceston, 8 degrees and wet in Devonport. You know, Mondays are bad enough, Joe, to let alone know that we've got Tuesday and Wednesday with wet, cold weather on the way. I know. Our poor cameraman Benny's got two days off. He's not happy. Thank you very much for that, Murph. That's all from the team for now. Thanks so much for your company. Have a lovely evening. We'll see you a bit later with updates. Bye for now.